What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Behind the Facade. So here we are on episode 127 and it is the week of the 26th of September 2022. And today's podcast is going to be slightly different from what you're used to. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of the changes. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to explain some of the timetable changes I'm working to that I'm certainly going to be trying to achieve. And um, I'm also going to be introducing a new segment. Uh, the new segment is going to be on real estate news, property investment news, economic news, anything that the various headlines that I've spotted in the last week that I think are pointing towards some economic uncertainty or challenges ahead. And so, um, yeah, it's going to be one of those segments that I expect to develop over the next couple of weeks because... It's a, it's a work in progress at the moment, but it is something that I have been uh, thinking about for some time. And given what's going on in the economy at the moment, given the complete uncertainty out there with interest and inflation and all that, I thought this is something that needs to be brought in now because there are going to be changes that need to be, um, we need to pay attention to them because I do think they're going to impact the investment uh, sector. So I'm going to finish out today's episode with some of the mindset and behavioral uh, advice that you're familiar with. And that is, you know, that's going to be the, the, the behind the facade mindset segment that I'm going to try to include in every podcast. Now, it's I'm not going to be doing away with the guest interviews. So they're just this is going to be something that I do as well as now, as discussed the timetable is changing. No more Monday updates. Uh, the reason I've explained already on a previous post, but really 6 a.m. Tuesday morning, the Irish or London time, those are the times that I'm going to be working to going forward. The reason I've changed it is really just down to uh, a bad habit I was getting into, leaving everything until Sunday evening and then going into the office. And just I just don't think it's a good habit to get into, especially not when you're sacrificing kind of time with your family and stuff for just being lazy. And uh, so you know me, I'm always watching what I'm doing and uh, checking my habits and making sure that I'm trying to optimize my behaviors and things like that. The reason too is that the news segment that I'm creating requires me to download some of the newspapers over the weekend and stuff like that. So this is something that I'm going to be um, paying attention to and um, if I'm if I'm really to give you guys the full value of the news and stuff like that, then I don't think I should be posting before the weekend because there's some good news articles and opinions that come out during the weekend. And I don't want to be working on the weekends if I can help it. So it means that I'm going to be catching up on the news during Monday and then posting on a Monday for Tuesday a.m. Uh, upload. So let's get into, as I mentioned, the guest interviews are going to continue. Um, I'm also adding in a weekly live stream and I'm going to be doing that over on my main YouTube channel. Now the plan is for this to be every Wednesday at lunchtime. Obviously I have a, a dynamic schedule in uh, in terms of work and things like that. So it's, it's something that I'm trying to dial in and make non-negotiable, but there may be blips from time to time. But uh, that's going to start this week. So 1 p.m. Irish time uh, this week, Wednesday. I hope you can join me for the live, live stream. If you can join me, you will be able to uh, ask some questions and, uh, and, and, you know, various things like that. So without further ado, let's get into the new real estate news segment. Right. News and economic news. I'm, I'm, I'm including economic news because it's, you know, if, if I just do real estate news, it's going to be lots and lots of press releases from various real estate agents about the latest development that they're releasing or whatever. And that isn't the kind of news I'm talking about. What I'm trying to do here is cover important real estate headlines. And often that has more to do with policy change or economic global economic events, trends, various things like that, anything that could impact the investment market. It's not going to be uh, an announcement. It's not going to be that kind of news. I'm going to be citing a number of news sources. Most of them are my own news. You know, I have various subscriptions to newspapers and various things like that. I'm going to be quoting from them, but I'm also going to be borrowing heavily from 
Irish Real Estate News. Now that is, uh, I'm going to give a sh- quick shout out to Carol Tallon. Um, she's a fellow podcaster and a friend. Carol uh, used to bring me on her podcast uh, all the time and she has uh, lots of different, she's loads of media experience and incidentally she was actually m- one of my guests, one of my guest interviews back way back now in episode number 50 of the podcast. So you can go back and listen to that. I'll leave a, a link below in the show notes. Getting into the global real estate news and in particular the economic news and today is a real big news day. And the reason it's a big news day is that the Bank of England, um, the after the announcement by the new government or by the with Liz Truss appointing this new uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, he, he's gone out and he's made these kind of very wild kind of uh, assumptions and, and he's made these kind of announcements that the market has basically not accepted as being wise and, uh, and sensible. And it is really punishing the British pound. And the British pound lost... 6% of its value in the last 24 hours, which is pretty staggering. And what it has done is it has massively fallen against the dollar to the point that people are expecting that the Bank of England is now going to have to increase its interest rates in order to counteract that imbalance. Because the biggest problem with these issues is that when you get into um, buying fuel and oil and gas and all this kind of stuff, all of that is priced in dollars. And the fact now that they've lost six or seven percent in the last 24 hours alone means that the cost of diesel and petrol and fuel and everything has just gone up by six percent overnight. And obviously they're already dealing with a massive issue with fuel costs and stuff like that. Now this is going to have a massive impact on the market. The reason is is that the the Bank of England have to fight inflation. And obviously, fuel and energy costs and all that are going to drive inflation even higher. So they have to counteract that. So what are they going to do? They're going to increase interest rates. And there's already warnings that the interest rates could go as high as three times what they are at the moment. So um, that is going to put a lot of UK property investors in a difficult position unless they've fixed in their rates for for the next while. But this is more negative news when you add what is going on with Brexit and with the, you know, just the uncertainty in the UK at the moment. And with the, um, just, it's a pretty dismal looking outlook for the UK market at the moment. And if interest rates shoot up like that, you can see an awful lot of pain in the property sector. Now, what else is happening in the global market? This is uh, the, the newspaper uh, headline coming from the the Guardian newspaper, and they're pointing to the bursting of the China's property bubble. Now, this is not news. This is old news as far as I'm concerned because I talked about uh, Evergrande uh, way back in November, I think it was, on the podcast. And we are here now, you know, kind of nearly a year later talking about the same thing. But what's really happened in, the, in, in China is there's just this growing unease with the way it's happening. More and more developers, more and more of these big companies that were quite stable once upon a time are getting themselves into trouble. And what's happening now is that the, the mortgage, the people that normally buy these properties, uh, what they would often do due to the different rules and stuff in China what they would do is they would say, yes, I'd like to buy that apartment. And the moment they put their name down as reserving that apartment, they had to start making payments on it. And so unlike the system that I'd be used to here in Ireland or the UK or the US for that matter, you you would not put down, start paying until you've actually exchanged and until the property is actually ready to hand over. In China, you simply buy off plan and you say, yes, I'd like that. And they start collecting money from you straight away. So you're in a situation where the property, they might not have even begun digging, you know, the foundations and yet you're on the hook for this. And so with all of the difficulty in the market there, you have a situation where the investors 
are suddenly going, hold on, why are we pay- making these payments? Like this company could go bust. So they've started to withhold payments and it's becoming like a boycott where they're getting all of their fellow investors or fellow mortgage holders to do the same. And it's having this knock on impact. So there's a lot of worry that this is like a Ponzi scheme and that it is going to come crashing down. So you've got the US Fed increasing rates. Now the British pound is about to go through this big uh, lift in prices. China is going through a bit of a property bubble at the moment. What else is happening? Well, Turkey, this is a really, really interesting one. I've been watching the Turkish economy for a while. And obviously you've got Erdogan as the, uh, the guy that's in charge in Turkey. He is a guy that, um, you know, he's one of these kind of autocratic people and he just decides whatever he wants to do and nobody can really force his hand. And what he's done last April, he decided that rather than increase it, let me just go back a little bit. Last April, the inflation rate in Turkey was running at 20%. Now at the moment, we're all losing our hair because it's at 8% or in the UK's case, it's just about to hit 10%. Now that is pretty bad. That is like, that is serious stuff. But in Turkey, they were dealing with 20% back in April. And the thing to do when, and th- that with that inflation rate running at 20%, the interest rates in Turkey were running at something like 19%. So if you were borrowing money, you were paying 19% interest. And what Erdogan decided to do in his wisdom was instead of increasing rates, which you're supposed to do to, com- to combat inflation, he decided to take an experiment and to reduce rates. So instead of going up, he actually went down. And what that has done is it has created rampant inflation. Now, 20% would be considered rampant in my view, but it is now running at 80%. And so you're in a situation where I think the the likelihood is if you're a Turkish citizen and you're filling up your car, I mean, I've, I've experienced this in the last while where I can remember to fill my car used to cost me 80 or 90 euro, we'll say, and now it's 120. And I'm kind of going, whoa, that's expensive. You're talking about not going from 90 to 120, but you're talking about going from 90 to maybe 300. That's the kind of increase that you're talking about there. Um, because they're, with their inflation running at 80% in a month, um, what you're looking at now is the, the value of, the, of the, uh, the Turkish lira has collapsed against the US dollar to the tune of about 300%. So they're now buying fuel in at 300% of the price it was last April. And so filling your car now, if you're, if you're paying 80 before, you're now paying close to 250. And so how many people can afford that? This is going to create a collapse. And a lot of people are sort of banking on the Turkish economy collapsing at some stage in the near future. So all pretty negative uh, headlines and pointing towards some kind of a global recession. Now, in addition to that, we've obviously got Russia in the middle of its war with Ukraine. And things are really looking quite bad in Russia now. Uh, you've got this huge just instability, instability caused by the partial, uh, what do they call it, mobilization. And so he's drafting people. Now, I have a friend, I was at a birthday party yesterday and one of the uh, guys at the party, he has a friend who's living in Russia and he had just got Russian citizenship. He was living in another country, or he's from another country, moved to Russia, and he wanted to get Russian uh, passport. So he got a Russian passport. Now, this is before the war broke out and all that, but he has a Russian passport. He had to give up his existing passport to have a Russian one. And when you're in Russia, you have to carry your papers with you at all times. So he stopped on the street by the police, asked for his papers, showed his passport, right, you're going to Ukraine. That was just just like that. He is now off to Ukraine. And this for this reason, you can see, if you're watching the headlines, like tens of kilometers of traffic, people cycling to the borders, just get out of Russia as fast as possible because there's a concern that Putin is not 
He said that he was mo- a partial mobilization and he only wanted so many people. It's starting to look as if it that's really a bit of propaganda. And in fact, it's much, much greater in numbers than that. And so the likelihood is probably a million people are being called up. And it's pretty, um, uh, th- there's, there's no kind of rhyme or reason to it. People who shouldn't be sent off to war are being sent off to war. People who have no training are being sent to the front like literally taken from the streets straight to the front and told, here's a gun, go off now and uh, and fight. So that's obviously creating huge instability in Russia. And it's the, the same problems that we had in Ukraine with everyone leaving Ukraine and this refugee crisis that we've had and we've been dealing with for months. You now could have a situation where you've got Russian refugees leaving Russia to get out, uh, to get as far away from potentially being drafted into the military so more instability there obviously ukraine is going through a very very unstable situation turkey which is close to ukraine going through this unstable situation and then the rest of europe is dealing with this situation where you have got um fuel bills well forget about fuel bills just fuel being cut off like the gas has been shut off by russia and therefore there is some some real pain ahead for a lot of people so this is obviously going to create uh, a huge amount of economic uncertainty and i think if anyone out there thinks that the market is just going to continue going in a normal way um, i think you're just deluding yourself i think there's just too much going on right now too much uncertainty that i think um, it's going to have this knock-on impact and the fact that rates are now being affected and all of this i just think that we could be in for a difficult market in the next while now interestingly enough i saw a headline there today that house prices or sellers are putting up prices in the uk at the moment um in the despite rate rises and the cost of living crisis now this is what i have seen before back in 2008 what happens is there's the market kind of turns nasty and people actually decide that they're going to put their price their property on the market and they're going to increase the price so that when people look for a cut they can actually end up getting what they really want in addition to that what there is also going to be happening here is there's there will be people that are actually buying because there's a sense that oh i don't want to miss out on the market it's been ripping for the last while it'll probably continue to rip That is not the case, certainly not in my opinion. And uh, I mean, obviously all of this is just my own opinion, but I think you wanna be very, very careful. Here is the headline. If If you're watching the YouTube video, you can actually see what I'm talking about here. I've got the headlines up on the page. If you're listening in on the podcast, I apologize. Um, Bank of England will not hesitate to raise interest rates. That's the latest coming from the Bank of England. And, it's just it's a response to this pressure that they're now finding themselves under so there is a lot of concern about what's going to happen the new the the uh, the new york times is coming out that the us dollar is strong which is good for the us but very bad for the world and so what that's going to do is it's going to drive up like the likes of the the euro and the the pound they do not want to have all of this um this this imbalance between the currencies there was this kind of stability there and it fluctuated a little bit but never hugely this massive fluctuation now it means that cost of fuel and all this kind of stuff are going to get out of whack and people are just going to have massive inflation unless they're careful so this is something that this is like a global issue that we really need to pay attention to I'm just going on to the Yahoo finance page here and it's talking about the stock market is wavering as the Fed, you know, with Fed fears. And, uh, you know, so the stocks fell again today. Now, the stock market always jumps up and down like crazy. What we don't normally have is the real estate market fluctuating like that. Um, Interestingly enough, they had an interview today or yesterday with John Paulson. And John Paulson is the guy that actually, if you look at the the Big Short Mark um, movie, it, he was the guy that basically made the the millions, or he was certainly one of the guys that made billions betting against the market. Now he's saying that it's different this time, but um, I don't know. 
going to get into some local news. And I say local, I mean Irish real estate news. Irish real estate news, uh, some of these articles are going to be coming from Carol's news uh, website, which I'm going to put a link down to in the show notes. And the first thing that I came across was, you know, commercial property. What does the change in financing rates mean for Ireland's real estate sector? And the market has changed dramatically in 2022 as the spectre of inflation hangs over. Now, as I've said, I don't like to be the guy that kind of says, I told you so, but I have been talking about inflation as a risk since last November, I think it was, or even before that possibly. And so this, in fact, I think it was last June that I started speaking about inflation and the fact that it was creeping up and that this was something that I just had a, a, a concern about. And the problem is, if you're living in Ireland, uh, you're not, the, the Irish bank, the Bank of Ireland or the central bank, they don't set the interest rates. The ECB sets the interest rates. And so we are at the mercy of what's happening in Europe. And obviously, Europe is going through this huge inflation issues. And so we're going to be caught by that. House price growth in Dublin slows significantly amid increases in supply and higher interest rates. Now, a slowdown is not a reversal and it hasn't turned into a loss making thing yet. But I have to say, I do think that there will be a, I'm not, I'm not going to like, I've talked before about this. The big issue that we have is that you have got supply and demand, massive imbalance. But the biggest issue we have now is affordability. And unless prices are reduced, you simply will not be able to get a loan to cover the mortgage that you want to pay for the property that you're looking for. Um, you know, the prices might stay the same and the builders that are building the houses may wish to keep the prices the same. But if the buyers are unable to afford the mortgage because rates have gone up by two or three percent, and in addition to the two or three percent that they have to pay, they are also now looking at a situation where their fuel bills have gone up, their shopping bills have gone up, um, and everything has gone up. And so the the a little bit of you know headroom that you had before has quickly disappeared. And now all of a sudden you're at a point where you're saying, look, we actually have zero headroom here. If anything goes wrong, we have nothing. We have nothing left. And so therefore people are going to put off decisions and things like that. Now the problem we have here is that the rental market is completely broken as well. So you have a situation where people can't buy the property because they can't afford the mortgage. And at the same time, rents are going crazy. And so you might kind of think, well, isn't that a great thing for landlords? Well, no, it's not actually because landlords out there are being kind of chased out of the market. And you have articles like this, Sinn Féin alternative budget calling for a sea change in housing. I mean, the problem with people who are not in government is they come up with all these kind of ideas and stuff like that. And a lot of the time, if you were actually in government, you realize that you can't do this. Um, now, I'm not saying that they're their ideas are wrong or anything like that but paper will not refuse ink and a lot of the time all you have to do is say something that is pushing against whatever the you know the, the, the parties that are in power are saying uh, clearly there's something wrong out there but I can tell you as a person who's involved in the property market that it is not easy in the property market it's not something that we're all out there making huge profits and that we're really enjoying life at the moment it is a tough struggle at the moment and it's at a point where a lot of projects are becoming marginal and so you really have to be uh, in fact one of my uh, mastermind clients was just telling me he's, he's based in the south and he was saying that a lot of the projects that they had lined up have just completely all been shelved just recently and so because of that you can see this is not a walk in the park like and so all of these kind of ideas that we can just make some changes and things will all be great. Hibernia Real Estate Group achieves full occupancy. Now, that was something that I just captured this headline because I think it is they're one of the lucky guys because I don't think this is going to happen too often going forward. Uh, full occupancy is something that I think we're probably going to be seeing less and less of. And I say that because I watched what happened uh, to the TikTok deal. And TikTok have signed, you know, some huge leases in the last 12 months, but they've actually just walked away from another 70,000, I think it was, 
And uh, oh, maybe it was even greater than that. I can't remember. But the reality anyway is that we have some serious uh, issues ahead of us with uh, big, te big tech companies now with interest rates increasing and all this kind of stuff. Those guys are starting to retract. And the reason is so much of the big tech, so much of their funding comes from advertising. And with this kind of stuff going on and the recession and uncertainty out there, people are cutting back advertising like crazy. And so this is what's happening is this, it's kind of this knock on impact where it's having a domino effect across the board. Here's one that's a little bit more negative. South Korea investment pull, has hit pause on a 140 million sale of the Dublin Docklands. So they've decided not to dispose of property and that's because of uncertainty. Now these guys are thankfully for them in a position where they can put something on hold but it's because of the uncertainty. I'm pretty sure the reason they're doing this is because they, they're getting sh crappy offers or they're getting no offers and if you put a property on the market and it sits there for a long time people get the perception that this property there's something wrong with it like it's, it's not selling and so it starts to stigmatize the property so you've got to be very careful that if it's on the market if it's sitting there being marketed every day day in day out that you have a good reason uh, that you think you're going to get the property away if after months of all of this marketing it's still sitting there it starts to look like it's tainted in some way so a lot of times big investors will just pull the plug rather than risk that Business Post, um, just interesting that uh, they were pointing out that investors shelled out almost 1 billion uh, euro on second-hand Irish homes in 2021. Now, institutional investors and in real estate firms snapped up one in 10 second-hand properties in the country. That's more than 4,500 properties. I am, uh, I'm wondering whether that's going to continue and because the actual... What is, what is driving that in this market is that uh, rates, bond yields and things like that, if you have an institutional investor based in Germany or something like that, and it is looking to buy bonds or things like that, bond yields in places like Germany were something like one per, like 0 0.01 of a percent or 0.1 of a percent. They were absolutely microscopic. And so you suddenly see, look at this, in Ireland you can buy a property with 150 tenants in it and you're getting 3.4% um, or 4% yield. That looks fantastic in the scheme of things. Now fast forward to these rate increases and all of a sudden these deals that people were offering at 3 and 4%, it doesn't look quite so good because you can buy a German bond for, for not far off that now. So everything is being, all the calculations are shifting along with that, um, with that decision. Um, there's an article here from the, um, from, uh, the journal and uh, it's, it's an opinion piece more than anything, but it's talking about the dysfunctional housing policy that's failing a generation of renters. And it's talking that uh, homelessness is now rampant that 50,000 Ukrainian refugees are in emergency shelter and uh, there's a shortage of student accommodation and it's just there is most definitely a major problem in the housing uh, sector we have a housing crisis at the moment but just because there's a housing crisis does not mean that we're in a situation that is going to work uh, that we're all going to be um, you know that investing in property is going to continue to go up because people have got to pay rent and have got to pay mortgages in order to move you know to be able to live in a place and with the uh, the next headline that I have on the same sh slide here is that wholesale in, uh, electricity prices have risen by 45 percent from July and so you're into a situation where just things are all sort of happening at the same time this is a major economic crisis i think that we're looking into and it's going to take it's not going to happen today but you're going to see the knock-on impact and as my as i mentioned my uh my friend down in cork has uh, has seen that you know jobs have been dropping off and stuff like that i think you're going to start seeing more of that in different areas I just thought I'd pick up one or two uh, headlines that I also spotted. So Cairn Homes is actually being mentioned by 
in the Investor's Chronicle. Now, the Investor's Chronicle is this uh, magazine, and it's an online website now as well, but it comes out with investment shares that you can buy. And funny enough, they're recommending the Irish house builder, and they're saying that it's uh, Ireland and the UK are in the middle of a housing crisis, and this small number of homes relative to the number of people who need them has caused the value of properties to soar in the past few years. So it's suggesting that Cairn is a good buy. And then finally, um, Glen Vey closes a BlackRock deal with a German cuckoo fund. Now there's a term that we're hearing, this cuckoo fund. And what that is, is there's kind of a pushback against these big funds. And there's this whole thing about, oh, you know, these big wealthy funds are coming in and buying up. And of course, this is a little bit like, I can remember back in 2008 when the recession sort of started in 2008 and there was a massive pushback against the developers, the greedy developers and stuff. And the it seems like the venom is now coming out for the big funds and stuff. But got to point out a few things. Like I'm I'm involved in a couple of deals that involve uh, big big properties being built and stuff like that. And I've seen some of the economics and some of the numbers being produced. And the reality is, is, is if you put the property up for sale, if you build, say, an apartment building and put it up for sale in the traditional sense and allow people to come along and buy it, you will lose money because the cost of construction, the inflation, all of that stuff that's happened means that you will actually lose money on that deal. The economics of a lot of the, the economics of these big property apartment schemes and stuff like that, they just, they don't work from a traditional sense. In the, uh, back in 2006, you could build a load of apartments and put them up for sale. And what you would have is a load of individual investors would come along and buy them up. And the thing is, is back in those days, cost of construction against the value of the property, against the sale and the profit and everything, it meant that there was a lot of profit to be made on the deal. Fast forward to today and construction inflation has gone up massively. Uh, delays and all that kind of stuff are issues. Labor is a big issue. But in addition to that, you also have the the different regulations that have been introduced over the last 12, 15 years. And those regulations now are far more onerous. And there's all of these extra things. I mean, the the environmental stuff, that is, there's a whole load of cost that's associated with the environmental stuff. Now, of course, it's necessary, and I don't push back on that at all. But what it has done is it's meant that the cost of an apartment, each apartment, is more than you'd actually get from putting it up for sale. And so we're in a bit of a crisis situation here. Now, along comes these big funds. And these big funds, they value the income being generated by the overall property, and they apply a yield to it. So if they buy a, you know, 200 apartments and they pay 200 million for that they will look at the income generation from that 200 million and they'll say well this is producing three and a half or four percent and they will value that against a german bond producing 200 million on a german bond is going to make them less than you know one percent of that and so they'll value that and say yeah this is a much better investment than a bond or they'll look at it from the point of view of negative interest rates that were the case a couple of months ago. All of a sudden, the ECB is increasing rates. And, and the, by, by looking ahead, I do think we're looking at more and more rate increases. And so a lot of these funds are now going to start dropping out. Um, and when they drop out, you're going to be in a situation where there is no longer anyone to actually buy to make these apartments. And so I think we're looking at a possible issue there and that is where people are talking about the government stepping in and maybe the government being the one that is buying the um, paying for the construction of all these things obviously this is all having a pretty negative effect and housing charities are have helping 75 percent more evicted people since 2019 so there is a very big price to pay for all this and there's an awful lot of people out there in a very difficult situation a little final uh, little piece of news that I picked up today. Joe is talking about that there is casting calls out there at the moment for a new TV series that is going to be about trying to buy a home in Ireland. And uh, so anyone who's interested in that, I found it in Joe. And uh, obviously anything that is kind of the current talk of the town, that is usually what um, people make television shows. So it's going to be a reality TV 
show about that. That'll be interesting. Um, final words, just a quick shout out to um, Carol Talon again. Carol, thank you so much. Um, Carol puts out this weekly roundup, property roundup. It comes out every Sunday. And uh, this this week's news, a lot of it came from the Sunday property roundup. Now, Carol has got a uh, an online website called Irish Real Estate News. And you'll find if you just type in irishrealestate.news, you'll find it there. So I'm going to put a link down in the show notes. But um, a lot of the headlines I got today came from that. I'm going to be doing this uh, weekly uh, trawl through the news. And I uh, hope you found it useful. All right, the final segment today is I'm going to go and talk about the behind the facade mindset. And the mindset, when things go like I do believe that things have started to go beyond economic uncertainty. We're, we're not in a situation now that you would call uncertain anymore. I think it's quite clear that things are getting quite bad. And I remember a similar kind of sense of this back in 2008. I remember I was, I was living in Spain at that time and I was watching the market very carefully and I was seeing that things are starting to get kind of pretty negative here. And I was watching news and I was watching, just keeping an eye on international news as much as local news. And I can remember thinking something bad is going to happen. And it and that emotion was there for about 18, maybe 12 months, 18 months. And then suddenly Lehman Brothers was that sudden moment when it all, it was triggered. And I kind of feel like there's a there's a bit of a chance that today's announcement from the Bank of England could be that moment. It could be, this is the point that we'll look back and say, that was the point where it all changed. Now, of course, I could be wrong, and I do not want to be alarmist, but it does feel like something bad either has happened today or is about to happen. Now, what can you do from a mindset point of view when you're thinking about, you know, where to go, what to think about, what to do going forward. How should you position yourself? First thing to do is never forget the four E's. Now I talk about this on one of my videos in the pod in in my on my main YouTube channel. The four E's are your ego, your emotions, the economy, and events. And those are the four E's that will basically bring you down or could cause you a huge amount of pain. And so. Uh, the economy and the events that are unfolding at the moment, clearly these are things that are going to impact the market, impact individuals, people that are in a situation. If you're heavily leveraged with your real estate portfolio or something like that, you could be looking at some difficult times ahead. I can remember going back to the 1980s, uh, late 1980s. I was only a teenager, but I can remember my dad talking about interest rates and I can remember the the interest on the house mortgage was something like 22% and was just crazy. Imagine having to pay 22%. Now, I don't necessarily say it's going to go anything like that now, but we've been dealing with negative interest rates and all of a sudden we're into a situation where the bank are saying they will raise rates to whatever is necessary to fight inflation. So there's risks big time risks there and um, you need to be careful now how do you position yourself when that is the case well this is where you have to be really careful with your ego and your emotions and there's a very fine balance between these two things the ego when you have a, a strong ego and the ego can come about from a couple of years of success uh, things going very very well for you which the last couple of years you could you know, lull yourself into a false sense of security that everything is going really, really well and, um, and you're in a strong position. And um, that confidence that those last couple of years have done, that can lead you into a false sense of security. You can think that, no, I'm, 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 in, good, I'm in a good shape and uh, I'm not going to be affected by all of this. Just be careful. Check yourself on that. Make sure you're not being overly confident. Uh, at the same time, this is why I say it's a fine balance. Make sure that you're not <clears throat> falling into fear, falling into uh, panic or anything like that. But your ego, where you've got to really be careful is your ego can lead to an unwillingness for you to accept the reality of the situation that you're in. 
a lot of the times people deny there's the I think they call it the five D's of a, in a crisis and there's there's denial is the first one where you just simply deny that there's an issue and then after a while you start to accept that well maybe there is an issue and then you delay the the second D is the delay and that is a big one because that delay is when you could be doing something and then the next one is that you've got to make a decision and so there are, you're you're going through this whole thing where you had the you had the time you denied it then all of a sudden there's a bit of drama and now you're realizing that you've delayed your decision and uh, and so you have to make a decision and at the last minute when you make a decision usually it's a bad decision it's when fear and panic creeps in so just be be careful that you're not closing your mind to the fact that you could be caught here by this market I don't want to be overly uh, alarmist or anything like that, but I have been caught by the market. I've been caught where I don't believe that things could get as bad as they got. And I kind of sat back and I kind of thought, look, I'm fine. I'm not going to make changes to my situation because I think I'm, 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 I'm in a pretty good position. And fast forward a year or two and suddenly your back's against the wall. So just be aware that this may not be a blip this could be something that lasts for a year or two we don't know how long russia is going to decide to um, to continue with this war and if it i mean, god forbid it it goes beyond ukraine and it starts to creep into the rest of europe but even if it just it's germany and europe for years that's going to be a situation where you're going to continue there's going to be this continued inflationary issue with fuel and things like that remember your ego is the thing that will cause you to go bankrupt. Either you're ignoring the market and you're going to spend your way into bankruptcy or you're going to delay taking action and you're going to end up in bankruptcy. And a lot of the time people will do this simply because they're in denial that there's an issue. You've got to get cold, unemotional and decisive. You've got to make decisions as an investor. Now, an investor, do not be naive, okay? Professional investors, they know that you know, there's days when you win and there's days when you lose. Do not be naive. Do not think that you will get through your career without making a mistake. People make mistakes. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. But if, you just, if you're in denial about the fact that perhaps the last deal you did wasn't a great one, or maybe you've overpaid for a property, or maybe you should have fixed your rates and you haven't and now you're going to have to cut back on your expenses. An unwillingness to accept that you may have made a mistake is where you can get yourself into big trouble. So just remember, if you have to cut and take a loss or whatever, you at least get to live to fight another day. So just be careful with what you're doing there. As I mentioned, there's a fine balance. Um, what you've got to do is remember that... Um, real estate market it's cyclical there is what we call the market clock i've talked about this way back at the very start of the podcast a market clock is like a clock face midnight is the top of the market i think we are well past midnight and we are now probably around about the one or two o'clock where it's falling and you're going to be in a situation where the market could be falling now until it gets to six in the morning and then when six in the morning that's when it's at the bottom of the market and it start rising again. I don't think we're at anywhere near six in the morning and therefore be careful. Remember to try to live it to fight another day. Resilience and resourcefulness are the things that you need to bring, okay? Uh, as, re as I said, just accept that you, you're going to make mistakes, okay? It's an immature fantasy to think otherwise. And the market can always do unexpected things. That's the events, okay? Nobody saw Lehman Brothers going bust back in the day and nobody saw 9-11 <clears throat> happening in 2001. All of these things can just ha come out of the blue. And so don't be greedy. Uh, hedge your bets. Always keep back a little bit of cash so that, it, you know, you may not make as much money, you may not be as profitable, but you will live to fight another day. If you go all in, it's like gambling, you know, playing Texas Hold'em or something like that. If you go all in, you might win big, but you might also be out of the game. And so just remember that, that it's a zero, that's a zero-sum game. That is, 
uh, asymmetric. It's, it's binary. It's like zero for the loss, one for the win. No in between. And so be careful. Toughen up. Remember there is going to be summer seasons and winter seasons. In the summer, everything's going great. Everyone's winning. Everyone's running around, enjoying life. The winter season, things get kind of tough. You've got to, you know, steal yourself for a tough period. And big investment returns always come during a recession. So that could be you. You could be one of those people that makes the big returns. But you're not going to make it by continuing to do what you were doing six months ago. It's going to take a change of, uh, of, of just the way you approach things. Finally, resourcefulness. Start where you are. Use what you have. Do what you can. That is the Arthur Ashe quote. And I think it's a good one because what it's basically saying is stop waiting for the stars to align. They're never going to align. You've just got to do what you can with what you have now. Just make do, make some, make, make shit happen. Okay. Find marginal, marginal increases in your revenues. Uh, cut marginal costs here and there. Think outside the box. Stop relying on conventional thinking and just get out there, hustle, cut deals, keep the cash flowing. That is what resourcefulness is all about. Before you go, I'm going to be doing an in-person event and meetup. It's going to take place on the 8th of October here in Dublin. Um, I'm going to be talking about investment, property investment strategies during this challenging economic environment. And so check the show notes uh, for a link to some details on that and reach out to me by DM if you want to get more details on that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and uh, I shall catch up with you in the near future. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Facade. If you enjoyed that episode or if you found it useful in any way, please take a moment to leave a, a review over on iTunes if you're listening in on the podcast. If you're listening or you're watching in on the YouTube channel, then maybe you can leave us a like. And uh, if you can't do any of those things, maybe just share the episode out with somebody you think would find it useful. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, uh, send me a message through the Facebook community. It's probably the best one to go for. That is called Behind the Facade Community. Alternatively, you'll find me on social media. My handle is Gavin J. Gallagher. And uh, as you would expect, I have a website that has the same name, gavinjgallagher.com. If you go in there, you can join the email list. You can add yourself in there and you can find out what's going on on the various projects that I am working on. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Speak to you again next week.